I hope you guys realize that sitting through all this, doing this for the past 56 chapters, has not been easy. I have been driven mad. I have gone insane. Then I got bored with being mad. Then became sane. And now I become insane again. Became a homicidal mi murderer. Became a woman named Marge. And now I'm back to normal. And yet, all my experiences still have taught me one thing. Next time I hit a 60-something long chapter of a fic that has a something that I disagree with, I am running away! 18 days till the portal closes. Well, we shouldn't have anything to worry about. Now, should we? Peter Parker, a guy who was down on his luck a few months ago, was going to be a father and star family. Yeah, Peter Parker, the guy who was down on his luck. I wish we had that Parker back, because that Parker I relate to. This guy will now be known as Sue. So, Sue began to talk to Slut Luna while they were in inside her room. After all, she was tired and beaten at the rate having the Venom symbiote forcefully removed from her body. And of course, Slut Luna is her usual self, blaming herself for the whole entire thing and dealing with Venom. And Stu is like, No, wait, chillax, man. It's perfectly okay. We're good, we're good. Could have happened to anyone. And Slut Luna is like, no, 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 it's my problem. I should have had it. I failed you, I failed everyone, I failed my sister, failed Twilight, even failed Pipsqueak. I'm a rotten mess. And Sue's like, no, you're not. And then it came, we begin a fight scene. As Luna proceeds to have a flashback. And as the battles proceed to wage on, Slut Luna Sully also has images of Scootaloo, Pipsqueak, and everybody else of giving her light. But who brings this, of course, to her? Not Twilight, you may ask. Oh, no, 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 no. She's not important. Peter, on the other hand, Stu, he's important. And after a little bit of cuddling, snuggling, Slut Luna recovers and proceeds to discuss to Peter what exactly is going on with him. As Stu slowly realizes that he now has the ability to sense magic. So, besides being a knight, besides being a the lover of a princess, besides having billions of dollars, and having no problems whatsoever, and coming back from the dead, and also having the sword of Deus Ex Machina, he can have such magic! You know, what do you think? So, I'm to find a Peter Parker in all this. Until then, we have to deal with Stu. I'm going to talk some more about the magical link that holds these two people to get together, and that uh, her spirit is now a part of him. And that they are now stronger together. Especially now that Stu has bonded with Twilight, his magic is reaching that levels of a god! Yep, that's right. No saying, no earning anything, no trying, no cutie mark, no... Pierce does bonded with Twilight now, so now he's a god. I mean, we already knew he was godhood, but now he is ultra powerful, and apparently, thanks to that link, he will soon become an alicorn. And he's immortal. Well, not immortal, immortal. I mean, disease and beheading will still work, but... Ageless? Yes. Twilight is now ageless. Peter's now ageless. Her friends are not. Congratulations, Vic. Everybody else has forgotten those fears, but you have now confirmed everybody's fears, and have now canonized every single one of those damn blasted fanfics where Twilight goes crazy over the loss of her friends, and then proceeds to go suicidal and leaves Celestia alone for the rest of her life, because apparently Twilight itself is like that. Oh, I already did commentary on that with uh, Questioner's Mirage. But 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, and now we now know that Peter is now ageless. But we're still going to ignore his friends, his loved ones too. And now Peter will soon become an alicorn. Um, you know, people, I think I want to call Starlight and apologize to her for every time somebody has ever called her a Sue. And then I want to find the people who call Starlight a Sue and then show them this fic. Because this is it! This is ultimate stew levels. All right. This is what it really means to be a stew. Peter suddenly has magic sense because of his bond with Twilight. He is now immortal. He's now ageless. And now Twilight doesn't even have to worry about her friend side because she has her with Peter Parker. F you fuck. Oh, and apparently the Equestrian Saber is now a uh, is now a God Blade that is able to bond itself with Peter and is now able to link itself up and turns to the form suitable for its wielder because Peter is also special. That's right, Ancient Blade, and now Stu owns it. Woo! I just want this to end. Sunset groaned. You and me both, sister. I won't be help if I get an edge. It looks risky. August gruff voice declared from behind, causing Sunset Simmer to find the X-Man standing by the door with arms crossed. Wolverine huffed, his starting price of attack, and no way thinking, it ain't worth it. This might be what Goblin's hoping for. Logan? No! What? No! What? Stop talking to her right now! But why? Because there is a chance. A slim chance that sooner or later, Sunset might fall for you, and as he dies. It's happened with every redhead you've ever been involved with. You seem to attract redheads, and you also seem to have this magical pheromone that makes almost every single girl within a five mile radius fall for you. So you are not touching Sunset, and you're not going to get her killed. So, stop! But I digress, Logan and Sunset are having a nice long conversation about how Sunset feels. And then we cut to Stu walking his aunt through the graveyard. Such a pleasant location. And then he proceeds to talk about how I let you be careful. And, Peter, and Stu's like, Ah, oh, sure, why not? Don't worry. It's not like anything can kill me. I am practically invincible, remember? And meanwhile, Black Cat is walking around thinking about Peter. Doing what he does best, being all sexy. And then we cut to the next scene where Money Grubber, oh, I mean Twilight, no, no, Money Grubber, is on the edge of a skyscraper looking out over the city. You belong, you belong to the city. And of course, Money Grubber has now. So delightful cravings. Meanwhile, Stu, of course, is talking to him, and they're all busy thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, how the big bad is going to occur, and they're all giving each other confidence boosters. I wish I had some confidence boosters. And then we get over to the syrup montage. Hooray. With a final cry of, Osborne, this ends today! No, it, 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 it's not today. No. It'll never be over, will it? Five days until the no. What? <sighs> Look, time limit. Can we talk? Uh, sure. What's the problem? You have been with us since chapter ten. Yeah. You've kept popping up telling us that blank days remain until the portal closes or until hell breaks out or until the world ends, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Have you ever noticed how pointless you are? Pointless? What do you mean? Well, when it was three months till D-Day, Discord Day, you sort of made sense because you were telling us how much longer it was until... Discord came. Then, 
when O Day was now a, a thing, Osborne Day, you were warning us how much longer until Osborne was going to have full power and was going to break the dimensional barrier and come in to kill us all. Yeah. Well, now you're trying to tell us how many days until the portal closes. Yeah. Well, here we are at the final battle, where we all know De Pierre's going to beat Osborne, because, sadly, um, we've got three more of these, and unless I get paid enough, I'm not doing them. And you are looking at me right now, and trying to tell me, five days till the portal closes. But we're here in Osborne. We are going to win this. No matter what happens, it's going to be a happy ending. Yeah, so... So, what is the point of telling me how many days remain when after Osborne loses, there's no reason to stay? We can go back home. And the portal will be fine. There's no reason for you to be here and tell me how many days until the portal closes. I... I suppose you're right. So, why are you here? Well, I, uh... I just thought that maybe you would want to know... No, I don't need to know. If anything, you've just annoyed me about how much time has been wasted on all these pointless filler scenes. I... I, I didn't realize it was such a waste. I'm sorry to break it to you too, man, but... I mean, you look like a good time countdown time. You, you look like a good countdown clock. Thanks. And, and look, how about you go find another fig to be a countdown clock, alright? Sure. Fine. I'll go be a good countdown clock somewhere else. Alright. I'll stay here and read the rest of this. Fine. Clock, clock, clock. Close. Don't worry, guys. I'm positive that countdown clock will be BOOM! Um. Excuse me one sec. Yeah. Um, Dixie, can we please clean up the blood goo and the brain matter left behind by the countdown clock? Uh, yeah. Sure. Can't believe a countdown clock went in and killed a kitten. I thought he was going to kill himself right bit there. I know. Get an all points bolted on this guy. So you come like a monster of lane. Osborne's voice murmured to the walls of the castle. And Spider Man shrugged. Does he ever say anything original? Hey, don't mock the unoriginality of that line. It's a classic. And after that little bit of cliche line, that's when Osborne reveals he's going to broadcast this to the whole entire planet. And thus he does, showing the, everybody the screens of the final battle. And Jameson even has a moment of silence where he suddenly realizes that not only is his boss. Totally biased, but yeah, beer Spider Man. Such an interesting revelation would be nice, but considering the fact that Demons has had no point in the story, I do not care. And apparently, the United Nations also planned to launch nuclear missiles at the castle. I would like to have Nick Fury say his opinion on this because it's a stupid plan, I'm not going to go with it. Thank you, Nick Fury. I hear that. And that is when Osborne also shows video footage from all, all the way towards the question out. And now, uh, so that way, everybody from Equestria will now know that Pierre is, in fact, an alien. In his hope that this will all turn uh, everybody against Pierre Parker. I have but one question. Why? 
Why would they do that? Why would they care? You know, Pierre as a pony. They seen him do great things. Why would they suddenly care that he is an alien? This makes no sense. Why would they actually give a frack? It's not like it's suddenly important or anything. Hell, why didn't Celestia just say he was a strange visitor from another world? What, did everybody just think that Pierre just suddenly come in randomly? Besides, everybody knows Pierre is Spider-Man anyway. So, it's not like it's really important. Besides, I, I'm surprised nobody decided to interview the new prince. Or take photos. Do investigative reporting. Ask him questions. No, 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 no. Apparently, Pierre is an alien. It's a big shock to everybody. And Osborne expects everybody to mistrust him. But that would only happen if the people of Equestria and Nisfic are really stupid. And why do I have this strange feeling that they're going to show me some instances of stupidity in the next few minutes? But meanwhile, the Spire team have a whole but have a huge battle with the X Men. Meanwhile, back on the question, Rainbow Dad asks the obvious question: Princess Celestia, what are we supposed to do? The said by a what? And Celestia can always say, "No, duh, Rainbow." Have you forgotten? <laughs> You're just Twilight's friend. You don't matter much to the plot. I mean. Have you seen your the photo? The picture of everybody together of Spider-Man's harem from the end of Spiders and Magic? Oh, you mean that breakfast picture? Yep. The one where it seems like every single girl in the photo is unbelievably heavily endowed? Yep. You know somebody's missing from this photo? Yeah, me and the others. My point exactly. You girls' thoughts kept mattering, oh, five minutes ago. I just... And there's right the flashback. And a huge psychiatric battle continues. We see them face off against Pe the likes of Thor. Iron Man. And other characters that seem to be easily handled by our team. These fights would have been interesting if I actually cared, or if anybody decides to bond them. Meanwhile, Celestia has a thought. I actually can think? Oh wait, yes I can. I think Discord may have never actually been captured at all. I don't know what my evidence is for this, but let's just go with it for now. And then there... While Wolverine stops Fury and Captain America for trying to kill Doctor Strange and stopping the portal for going to Equestria, Twilight, Spider-Man, and some of the other people, do we really care, go ready to face off against Goblin in one final battle! But let's face it, do you guys really care right about now? I bet 99% of you who are listening to this are just thinking, are looking at your watches, looking at the counter on the screen, and just thinking, when is this guy finally going to get back to it? Dragon Shy, a last of the Dragon Lords, or is going to get over to follow the Equestria Brotherhood. He hasn't done a follow the Equestria centric thing in almost a year. I need some follow follow stories in order to make me happy. Give me a few days. But hey, maybe that's something on the bright side. At least there's no signs of anybody being stupid enough to forget that everything that Peter's done for them, or so Twilight's parents being idiots. I can't believe Twilight's is dating an alien. I can't believe Twilight's banking an alien. We all trust him. I'm done, I quit! <laughs>